so we're out here uh, on the water. It's about ooh, 55 degrees or so uh, ambient temperature. Um, DA is a little high, but it feels pretty good out. Does not feel like a 55 degree day. So I'm actually in my sweatshirt <laughs> and uh, some leggings. And then I also have these really neat um, neoprene socks. So I do have a pair of boots on order uh, from O'Neill. Uh, they should be here this week. But I did get these socks in the meantime. Uh, they'll keep me nice and warm. So if you do any winter riding, I would definitely suggest investing in either a wetsuit, um, like a 4.3. Um, O'Neill's a great brand. <laughs> they fit really nice. Um, and definitely some boots as well as like a hood. Um, today I'm gonna take it pretty easy. Dan's actually out uh, testing his ski. So today we're gonna take it pretty easy. I'm just gonna plot around, try not to get too wet uh, since I don't have my wetsuit on. And um, we're gonna see how Dan's ski uh, reacts. He just did his own uh, intake. He's doing some testing with that. Um, has the SCOM as well, so that's the speed limiter. Um, it actually takes the speed limiter off, so. Uh, just did a couple things to it and just wanna see, you know, what the difference is, what the gain is, uh, so that we know. So while we're waiting for Dan to get in the water, um, we can talk a little bit about my ski. I did end up putting a catch can on it uh, from JP Racing. And, uh, you know, it's just a really good preventative measure uh, that you could do, um, especially if you have a supercharged ski. So, um, you know, more often than not, it's gonna pull oil, um, you know, through the intake. Um, and actually, I have some pictures I'll show of what the intake looked like um, before the catch can. Um, you know, with only eight hours on the skis, um, it was already getting a sufficient amount of oil that you could actually, you know, see uh, dripping down through the tube. So anytime you get oil into the intake, uh, it just causes problems. <laughs> you know, things don't, oil doesn't burn like gasoline, obviously, or um, so it just really doesn't, doesn't do great things for the uh, supercharger and the ski in general. So any, any way that you can catch that oil before it actually enters the combustion chamber, uh, the better. So as you can see here, I have the stock intake tube I pulled off of my ski. And you can see the little drip of oil just running down the intake tube. That was in there after only eight hours. The other thing about a catch can is it's cheap insurance, right? It's, it's 150 bucks, um, you know, for a catch can. And uh, it's really easy to install. Uh, literally just attaches to a, uh, a plate that's already on the front of the motor. Uh, so one of the best things about riding when it's a little colder out is there's literally not very many people out. You know, as we look around, there's one boat going into the dock right now. But other than that, it's super, super calm, super still waters out. Uh, all skis are limited to 68 uh, per the United States Coast Guard. Um, so not to say you can't go faster than that, but they don't want the manufacturers uh, letting the skis go faster than that. So he has a scum on that. So it just allows the motor to, to rev out. Um, and there he goes. So you get a little bit more top speed, right? Of course, because the, the motor is no longer, you know, limited by the speedometer. Um, but he also did an intake, uh, his custom intake. It's a real nice carbon piece. Um, so we're just out here seeing, you know, hey, what do these little changes do, you know, to improve the performance of the ski? Um, we're big race car people. And, you know, one of the ways that we've really made our thing, you know, our cars quite fast is what we call picking up the pennies, right? So every little bit that you can get, um, you know, every little detail that you can fine tune on your ski or your car or, or motorcycle, whatever, um, you know, whatever you're using for racing <laughs> purposes or just, you know, flat out fun, um, you know, will we'll make you go that much faster. So that's what we're doing today. A little bit of testing, a little bit of R&D and enjoying this beautiful weather. So here's what the ski looks like completely stock. And honestly, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a ton of tubing going back and forth. So by replacing that tubing with a nice short piece like this, 
you kind of create more of like a velocity stack and it looks pretty badass too. So as you can see, this piece is a direct replacement for the factory intake. It's on there really nice, looks really good. So this is the catch can that we installed and used. It's from JP Racing. It's a very easy installation and like I said before, just cheap insurance. This is actually from the other day where we did several runs and this was just a scom. Uh, the best we recorded was a 74 mile per hour run, uh, which it held there for quite a few seconds, kind of pivoting between 73 and 74. So this was kind of our baseline going into today, uh, knowing that the intake may pick up slightly. However, today's run with the scom as well as the intake now the ski went a maximum of 75 miles per hour, which you can see there on the GPS uh, screenshot that we recorded for the ride. So it looks like we picked up about one mile an hour over just the SCOM uh, by adding the intake. Hey guys, so <laughs> this wind is no joke, honest to God. Uh, in my wetsuit, I'm usually not very cold at all. Like I'm actually, almost hot in my wetsuit uh, when it's this kind of weather outside. But in just a sweatshirt, that wind as we're going across is pretty brutal. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks will say, hey, like wear, uh, you know, snowmobiling outfits or, uh, you know, when you go out for winter rides or, um, you know, <laughs> wear like a dry suit or something. Um, I can't speak for a dry suit or a snowmobiling uh, outfit. But I can speak for a wetsuit. Um, you know, it keeps you warm. Definitely if you're gonna, you know, ride in the winter um, or when it's a little colder outside, like in the fall here, Southern Pennsylvania, um, invest in a wetsuit. You know, the thing is too, like a wetsuit is gonna insulate your body. Uh, get a 4.3, uh, it's gonna keep you pretty darn warm. And if you do, you know, end up, you know, putting your ski in, uh, you know, wherever you're docking and you have to get in the water, you do not feel it. It's so warm. Um, it's really actually quite amazing. Uh, you know, the problem with, with uh, you, know, you know, snowmobiling suits or like winter snow pants or something like that is that they're really bulky and you will sink. Like it'll be really, really hard to stay afloat uh, with those types of suits. So in the interest of safety, you know, get a wetsuit. Um, not only are you gonna be more buoyant if you do come off your ski, um, you're going to be warm in the water and, uh, you know, always wear your, your, your personal flotation device, of course, but you know, it's just, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot better. Get your, invest in some good boots, a good wetsuit, um, neoprene socks if you don't want to buy boots. Um, and of course like a good neoprene, uh, you know, hood or ski mask or something like that. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I'll probably link them below in the video. Um, you know, to all these products, um, but yeah, the hood is like 20 bucks and I can tell you like just being out today and going like 60 across the water, it's a little cold on the ears. So, um, you know, definitely invest in that kind of stuff. I mean, you're talking, you know, between all that, maybe less than 500 bucks um, and you can ride and extend your season, you know, by a couple months. All right, guys, Dan's all the way down there. Let's go see if we can catch him.
testing on the Apex. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of gain. Um, you know, again, totally stock ski, just has a SCOM uh, and an intake on it. Uh, hasn't been tuned yet or anything. Um, so we'll, you know, take them back and, uh, you know, make a couple changes and, and see what else we can get out of them. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe for more content, not only on the RXPX, but on some of our other toys as well. In the meantime, live for the thrill and get out there and ride.